has an e-girl slash <laughs> the lack of an e-girl contributed to your success? If so, how? Hey guys, welcome to the first official episode of Pro Player Podcast. I've done some interviews with some pro players before, but this one marks the first official one since we got um, the graphics, the pro player podcast graphics. And to start off the first episode, we got someone super special. We got someone none other than Coops himself, the man that stole the PMPL America's show, even got Team Queso to tweet at him, um, a coops nerf a coops because coops so op but yeah i got a chance to interview with coops and it was a great interview and we went through a lot of things and you guys are about to be you guys are about to be enlightened by some knowledge by the man coops himself i hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned for more all right before we get this interview underway is there something you want me to call you other than Coops? Since you're now like you've transcended <laughs> Coops, do you have a do you have like a, a nickname that people are calling you by, or like anything of that nature that you want to be? Nah. By? What about no, that's fine. What about King Coops? That has a nice one to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude, your performance was absolutely insane, bro. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you for uh, coming on to do the interview. Uh, I'm sure you're getting bombarded with a lot of questions, a lot of a lot yeah. of fans and whatnot. Um, I guess that, that's going to lead into my first question, honestly. Like, how did it feel to not just only win, right, but you just – you've done something that I don't think any player has done before, bar, like, maybe, like – a pair of boy, right? Like your accomplishment. <laughs> how, how did it feel? It felt great. Um, because knowing that like, and has been trying to beat Brazil and Latin or like just mm. being on top of, of America's yeah. for a while now. Mm -hmm. And for me to do that with my performance, like, yeah, it, it just feels great. Yeah. The, the performance itself was absolutely, geez. I still, I still can't, I still can't believe it. We'll get we'll get a little bit more into that later, but let's like let's start let's start from the beginning, right? So right. actually, before we even get going, uh, is there anything you want to like talk about or mention or focus on in particular before we get going into like the list of questions? Mm, no, not really. Not really. Nothing. Okay, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way. Um, the stuff that you know all the aspiring players want to know such as what phone you on what what phone are you on what earbuds do you use all that stuff all right all right okay all right so of course one of the biggest things what device do you play on or what device did you play on during the tournament i played on an iphone 12 pro max iphone 12 pro max okay did you play on any phones before that leading up to the iphone 12 the iphone xr iPhone XR. So just mainly those two phones during your competitive like career, right? Yes. Okay. So would you say the 12 is like better, like a good upgrade? Yes. Way better. Yes. Way better. Okay. All right. So you guys heard it. Get yourself an iPhone 12. I mean, train hard like coops. Get your iPhone 12, and then you can pay it off, right? You can pay it off and buy more. <laughs> All right. What about earbuds? What do you use um, for your like sound setup? Just regular Apple headphones. Apple headphones. Okay. Nothing special there. And do you use thumb sleeves? Yes. Okay. Nice thumb sleeves. Maybe I need to get on that now. So uh, <laughs> on both thumbs. Uh, just my left one. Okay. So for, like, to like movement. help with the movement. Okay. Do you get yes. sweaty thumbs sometimes? Like. Mm. Sometimes, yeah. Not sometimes. all the time, but sometimes, yeah. Okay. So it's mainly for the help with the movement. Yeah. I, yeah. I have a lot of trouble with the movement, too. And then uh, your sensitivity. As for your sensitivity, everybody that's watching, just just go on Coops' Instagram, right? You have your sensitivities. You have a lot of stuff on your Instagram. Is that yeah. Right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, 
do you um you have a twitter too um do you focus on anything else other than instagram and twitter like are you trying to start up streaming i'm trying to start on my youtube my, YouTube? Yeah, my stream on YouTube. Yeah. Streaming and YouTube. Okay. Where are we going to find you on your stream? Uh, it's on Trovo. Trovo? All right. Okay. So yes. Trovo. And um, I'll put links in, everyone, uh, in the description below, and you'll see it pop up on the screen and whatnot. And then what's your layout? That's also on your Instagram. Um, speaking about layout, let's get a little bit more into it. So your five finger? Four finger. four finger oh, okay i saw someone mention that you were five finger um did you always play uh four finger i was at i was on uh three finger on my xr mm, okay was the four. was the size increase of the phone like was that helpful yeah it was okay all right i think that's uh it's pretty much it for all the the basic stuff so i mean honestly guys nothing too special I mean, all the all the work comes in through the grind, right, Coops? <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. So let's uh for everyone that doesn't know too much like about you, like I mean, everybody saw the performance you had, but for like, it wasn't like a overnight thing, right? Like, by any means. Yeah, it was not. It was a tough grind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, walk walk me through that from the very beginning of like when you first started to set foot in in scrims i think that's where everybody's competitive journey starts like your very first scrims that you start joining like walk me through from point a from there all the way up until you know your what was it 76 kills or something 76 76. kills mvp america's (laughs) championship like you can skip over here and there but just give me like the the main points that you really want people to know about um well i was in a team called insidious mm, okay it was yeah i was just like a tier two team made with friends mm-hmm. and then like we started running together and then we, we worked our way up to um tier one mm, okay how long did that take Ooh, i'm not sure probably like a couple months okay so just from tier two to tier one when you know, well, like you hear it all the time. Even a lot of tier one teams aren't considered like a strong team, right? We have a lot of yeah, yeah. But even that took months to just go from tier two to be recognized as a tier one, right? Yes. Okay. What happened after that? And then um, one of the nineteen knee managers messaged me and asked if I wanted to play with them in the in the Latin team. Oh, in the Latin team. So you play for nineteen e. Latin. mx oh yeah, like oh, okay okay yeah all right so i was there for a bit and then that's when i guess it was spring or something spring slicky mm-hmm. uh wild card uh, right yes okay. they like recognized me and then they asked me to come play for them mm-hmm. so then i went to play with them and then the grind started from there with them all right uh, and I remember your performance with them too. Even back then, your performance—you were, you were the player that everyone focused on when it came to like wild card, right? Yeah. You you are you were like going huge. And I remember, I think the very first day of that PMPL, like you struggled a little bit. Um, and I think I heard from Spring. I want to hear it from yourself, like. Apparently, like, nerves came into it. Like, you were yeah, really nervous? Okay. I was, yeah, I was a little bit nervous going into PMPL. Okay. Talk like, talk to me about that. Like, tell me, like, why were you nervous? Because, I mean, obviously, 76 kills, you were not <laughs> nervous at all. What it looked um, like, anyways. But how did you overcome that? How did it feel like? Stuff like that. How I overcame it was um, I just, like, I just relax, like, I just calm myself, like, I would just take deep breaths. Mm, okay, so deep breaths. I want to actually get a little bit more into that. So, like, during the game, the second you start to feel, like, nervousness creep up, you just kind of remind yourself to, like, breathe? Yeah, basically. Like, oh. just relax, have fun. Mm, okay. Is there anything else, like, um, that you do, like, you specifically? Like, of course, all the pro players, right, they hit the training rooms, they adjust their sensitivities they do you know that's that's pretty much staple so 
what are some specific things that you feel like you do that other players might not do? Like you mentioned breathing. I think that's a big one to just be able to have a mental reset mid game when you're feeling like that nervousness creep up, like breathe. Like, I think that's a huge one. Is there yes. anything else? Um, I played a lot of TDMs. Okay. TDMs helped me a lot too. Like um, custom, like 1v1s or just like... Just yes, 1v1s. 1v1s, okay. Who was your like... Uh, who were your, some of your like training partners then in the 1v1s? Uh, some of the Influence Rage players. Influence Rage. Yeah, like, Ooh, okay. How, how was that? It was the... It was Little Boy or Little Boy. Little uh-huh. Boy, the MVP for Brazil and then Mythic. And Mythic, okay. How did those go? Like... Uh, I mean, it was a back and forth back and forth yeah like no one really won by like a big like no one like to say completely like bodied each other like gotcha it okay. was like equal so you started doing these like in, in advance like how long in advance of uh pmpl were you start doing this in particular I'm not sure. A few weeks before the finals started, or like a month ahead. It was. It was actually like a couple hours before like the game started. Oh, like so so day. that that's like your yeah your daily like that, that your like pre warm up for yeah. you. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so you did that for warm ups. Uh, the breathing. Um, is there anything else that you do like? Um that you think other players should try well then again you don't have to tell me because you know this might be the big secret <laughs> to being like a freaking phenom like you but if there is something that you want to share or even like um just like an advice to like i'm not speaking to tier two uh players right like i feel like tier two players there's so much they could work on to get into tier one but this is mainly for like the middle of the pack tier one players to like the higher end is there something that you would tell them to like separate them even further ahead? Because that's what you did, right? You went from tier one, like high end tier one, recognized player, and you somehow broke even past that to like just insanity, right? Is there something you want to share that your secret sauce to that, or is there none and it's just like hard work? It's just hard work. Hard work. There's, okay. Yeah, it's just hard work in general. Oh, okay. There you go. You heard it first. It's just. It's hard work. No secrets. No secrets to be had here. Sorry, guys, if you guys are looking for, like, a, a secret. Okay, let's get a little bit into the, the nitty-gritty, um, like, your practice routine. Like, it's probably pretty standard, right? But just walk me through it real quick. Like, your practice routine, what do you focus on? Um, I hit fire. I focus a lot on that. Hit fire? I don't, okay. Yeah. Breeze? Uh, I focus on that a lot too, but like not as much as my hip fire. Okay, so that was mostly like in the TDMs, right? Like your hip fire yeah, and stuff. Basically, okay. yes. So, do you ever feel? So, I guess since you practice so much TDM and hip fire, I'm guessing that nervousness, especially in close range, is really detrimental, right? Do you feel? Yes. Do you still get the nervousness like creeping up sometimes in a close range fight, or at this point you're just so like comfortable? You just kind of know what to do and how to take a hip fire fight. Yeah, I'm I'm comfortable. Mm. Uh, I get nervous. I get nervous sometimes here and there. Here and but, there. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm really curious about the nervousness thing, right? So right. before when you got nervous, it would like uh, the second you start getting nervous, it would affect you, and then I guess it would carry through until you end up getting knocked or killed, right? Like. You yes. couldn't could re- really reset that? Okay. Now, in the past tournament that we just witnessed, like, your amazing performance, were there parts during that tournament, like, certain engagements, where you felt nervousness creep up on you? Uh, I, on that, in the Sandhog game against Ghost, uh, okay. Love Pine and, and that compound. Yeah. Okay, that's great, because that was shown on stream, too, so everyone would know. Yeah. Um, I, so was, you... I was nervous okay. at that point. Okay, so right after I'm guessing Alucard got knocked, and Ghost is pushing up on you guys, you you felt that small spike of nervousness. And I remember you got a knock on Spec. So did you yeah. kill the nervousness like before you knocked Spec, or like walk me it through? It was after. It was after I knocked Spec. Okay. So you and knocked then, Spec, uh, and then you took a deep breath. 
pretty much? Yeah, I was just like, I was trying to calm myself. Okay. And then that's crazy because you calmed yourself into that crazy nay, dude. <laughs> yeah, the need, yeah. Dude, that, <laughs> now that you've told me like how you were nervous and stuff, like thinking back to that fight, that's like an anime right there, right? You, you knock one, <laughs> you're feeling nervous, you breathe, you channel your inner power, your inner coops. And I remember that nade, like, it was like the the calmest nade ever because you just stood still behind the wall. You didn't run jump it. You didn't, like, move through it. You just, you you cooked it, and then you just let it go. And that whole time, like, your mind was, like, at zen, I'm guessing. Like, just the nervousness, you killed it. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Okay, so you're you're able to kill that nervousness quick now that's great i mean 76 kills like it's <laughs> man <laughs> all right let me see the list what else do we got we got a lot of questions but okay let's uh i guess this this kind of ties in so what was the hardest moment in your competitive career so far mm. by hardest you mean like hardest as in like um not so it could be a moment in game if something comes to mind but more like you know like this this playing comp is a grind right like yeah there are times where you feel like maybe you're not improving and you don't know how to improve or the team's not improving or you just feel like you might be giving up or you're not sure like one of those like what was the hardest in your competitive career so far i think in PM, PL, and NA when I was with EFC. Mm, okay. And finals. And the finals. Oh, okay. That was right. It wouldn't. We didn't really. I didn't really perform as well as I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, we didn't. We didn't do as good. Yeah. Um. Okay. I mentioned earlier wild card, but at that time it was EFC already, right? Yeah. Okay. My bad. Okay. So after that, you guys didn't qualify as EFC. What, where was your mental at and what were your thoughts where was it like immediately like okay i just gotta keep grinding or did you have second did you have doubts about yourself what was that like? i was actually like considering taking a break after pmpl and a Ooh, that's like crazy. i didn't yeah i didn't want to like touch the game at all anymore after uh-huh. we didn't qualify for americas all right and then and then what happened and then the knights told me that they might need some sub uh, they might need a sub for Masters League. Okay. Oh, and so then, it was just like a small Masters yeah, League? Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, a yeah, smaller tournament. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so so you stuck around because they offered yeah, you a basically. sub spot. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then so a sub. So I didn't watch Masters League. So they kind of hit you up to be a sub. During Masters League, did you eventually get put on starter because they saw – how well you were yeah, doing I, or yeah i played uh, a couple of days uh-huh okay and i got and i got mvp for i think day one and day two. Oh, sh- well and then, yeah that'll move you at the sub roll real quick <laughs> damn yeah and then i they uh-huh. basically like they, they just wanted me to be on the roster from mm-hmm. there i say damn the knights at a huge pick. I think that's the biggest, most impactful pickup to date. I mean, you got... I, I'm not too well-versed in the PUBG Mobile across the globe. I only really kind of know China and NA. But that's like... The only other thing I could think of is, you know, the Chinese player, uh, Cheng Si, that got picked up for a ludicrous amount of money, right? Yeah. And he's he started doing really good with the team, and then for you, you so you went from a team that didn't qualify, EFC, almost giving up, to being offered just a sub role on the Knights, to carrying not just the Knights to first place, but just carrying all like NA, like literally with the stats you put in, like that is, you could <laughs> say you carried North America to to the top, like that's that's crazy yeah oh man so what what do you think separates you from all the other like high-end players like i mean we had players that we 
like everybody kept their eyes on and talked about players like you know like Tensa, you know like Spec that you know had one of the highest frags. And what do you think separates you from all the other, all those other top end tier one players? Um, just uh, just the mentality I have, just like because uh, I know a lot of players, not including me, like they like. I guess like they got tired of seeing Ghost and Alpha Seven like always on top, mm -hmm. so like someone had to like change that, mm -hmm. and I I use that as motivation. So you're like you're saying your advantage was the fact that you were the underdog coming in. Yeah, right? basically. Every, everyone yes. else has always talked about, and that's what really drove you like to just you know what like screw these guys I'm better than them I'm I'm gonna prove <laughs> I'm better than them, right? Yeah, basically. Dang. Okay, well, I mean, that's great to hear because that's – that literally – everybody else in the scene can use that now because you're the one on top now. Now <laughs> anybody else can look at you, Coops, and be like, man, screw Coops. I could do better than that. I could <laughs> one-up that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. By the way, we were talking about the Sandhawk game. I just want to – I was casting it, okay? So I was – I, there was not a better story to be told in that game than just one is solely focused on you and the, so and the fact that you won that game too by finding yeah. the how did you like <laughs> dude like uh, a, after you won the game like you couldn't believe it yourself that you guys won in that fashion right like how what was that like it was just a great feeling, like knowing that we won that game and that we made the, like the gap bigger. Yeah, from second place, and it was uh -huh. just a, a, a great feeling. Yeah, like after you guys won the game, because for me, I was in disbelief. I was like, "This is this is better <laughs> than an anime." At that point, like, because I mean, in anime, you get these crazy like protagonist stories where it's like yeah where you're like oh okay that's a bit far-fetched it's unbelievable but okay i get it i'm watching an anime right that's how i felt <laughs> when you won that sandhawk game too because it's just ludicrous <laughs> that not only did you, did the knights you know kill ghosts that try to drop on them they also won the game and guess who won it it was coops and not just coops that won it it was like an impossible situation to win, and you find the one little speck of land. <laughs> like, what, did you say? Were you like, this? This is unreal. Or were you uh, like, yeah, I am just that good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. I didn't like. I didn't realize that that spot was there. Uh huh. And I don't know. I guess I just found it, and then yeah, I just, the rest is. Yeah. The rest is history. The rest is <laughs> Jesus, man. Oh man! So uh, during the whole tournament, what was the best? What was the best part in the whole entire tournament? Besides the fact, you know, at the end you won. Like for you, what was your favorite moment? Um, I think the nade against Ghost. Yeah, I think that was like my favorite moment. Mm, okay, yeah, that nade against Ghost was huge. Was there um any other like notable moments, like notable frags or anything? that you you would put up there or was it just all a blur because i mean 76 kills you just you're killing everybody left <laughs> yeah and right. i'm trying to i'm trying to like see like where i kill people and how <laughs> i'm not sure like how i get kills honestly like i just like, they just come to me they just come to you I, I, okay well first off like you just don't miss your shots like long range or close range i i feel like from what I saw on the broadcast, you like barely ever missed, right? Yeah, that was. I don't. I don't. I don't know. So okay, so okay, so this question is coming from like a competitive player experience, because for me, and I know for a lot of other players, especially during tournaments, there's always like those points where it's like, oh, I should have knocked this guy, or oh, I should have won this fight, you know. Did you have a lot of those moments in the game? Like, let's start with, like, the long-range sprays, right? Where you see a target, and you're like, oh, I should have knocked him, but you didn't. Did you have a lot of those? Or I feel like you had very few. I think I had a few. Just only a few, right? But otherwise, yeah. you felt like everything was on point. Yeah, my aim was just, I don't know. My aim was just different this weekend. 
Yeah. <laughs> what about close range? Did you lose any close range fights? You feel like, or was it? Just... I lost a couple. Uh huh. But my team was always there to back me up. Okay, so it's and not like you, you didn't throw any fights pretty much close range though, right? Like the ones that you should have won, you've pretty much locked in. Mm, I'm, yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah. All right. I remember there was a close range fight that you shouldn't have won. Um, Miramar, uh, the last day, I think it might have been second to last game. Um, you were pushing. You guys were pushing Alpha Seven. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and he was. You already knocked one player, and the second player of Alpha Seven was supposed to get the easy trade on you. Not only was he supposed to get the easy trade on you, he was below a ridge TPP. And you, from the spectator's point of view, you were facing away from him. Like, you were looking yeah. over the ridge. And then, I'm guess. So, what happened there? Did you just 180 on him and, what, full headshots? or? Yeah, basically, that happened, yeah. So I that, didn't, yeah. I didn't expect him to be there. I thought he was, like, somewhere else. Uh-huh. So, like, I was looking straight ahead thinking he was over there in the smoke. Uh-huh. But then he started shooting, and then I just turned on him. Okay. Did he, like... Did he even miss, like, one too many shots? Or was it just you had, like, the most perfect, insane flick and it was just headshots? I think he was, like, 40 HP shooting at me. Mm. And then I, I hit, like, two headshots, maybe. Uh-huh. And then he just, yeah, and, just died. And it was, like, it was a clean, crisp flick from you, I'm guessing. Like, yeah. That's the only way. Okay. Yeah. And, and you were recording your games, right? Because I saw on your Instagram you already posted, like, the first game that PK won in your POV. Did you record everything, like, throughout the entirety of the tournament? Uh, no, I only recorded day one. Oh, no, man. Yeah, that, that sucks. What What made you stop uh, recording? Was it like, oh, shit, it like, was, uh, we're winning? PUBG, like, the oh. admins. Oh, really, the admins. the admins? Yeah. Oh, what did the admins say? They didn't want you to run, like, a background, like, recording or anything? Yeah, they told me, like, to not turn off my GAC. And I and like the only way to like turn on my recording was supposed to turn off my GAC. Oh, I see. So I, I see. so I couldn't turn it off. I see. I gotcha, dude. Man, after your day one performance, you should have just paid someone to hold a <laughs> phone next to you and just record your phone screen from there. I mean, that is, there. Oh, dude, there's so many. I mean, you know it because you played it. But there, there were so many insane clips that could have been had right yeah like like that miramar miramar one we just talked about i would have loved to see your pov on that one like just how you did that how you pulled that one off oh dude okay well no more no no more montages or anything from uh, <laughs> pmpl right just that one instagram clip day one i'm making a montage just like from uh masters league clips from masters league okay all right dude like man i'm upset yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm upset that there's no more coops clips from your pov from that tournament like so i watched the day one your, your day one clip and like what's crazy to me is just you don't do anything particularly like insane or inhuman in day one and you still got like eight kills right I think yes yeah day one like in the first game and then it's just like it all kind of it just came down to your quick decision making and your game awareness right and like do you feel like all of that just kind of comes naturally to you or are there like specific moments where you're kind of just like you know just breaking everything down in your head and you just have a moment of, of clarity where it's like okay, like, this is the position to be in, and I just got to move here, or well, what's that like? Or are you just kind of playing on autopilot and you're just at a high level? Mm, I'm, like, in the very first game, mm -hmm. when I was on top of the hill, like, at the edge of the zone. Yeah. Um, I figured, like, instead of, like, team, like grouping up with my team, I figured, like, I had to go for an off angle. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And then I knocked one of them, and then I started doing, like, my ninja stuff. <laughs> yeah, that that got really, like, you found, like, a really skinny tree. And then before that, you found, like, a really skinny rock and all of Alpha 7. 
was like focused on you because I think you knocked actually I think you actually knocked Carrillo there. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and like, dang, dude, that moment you knocked Carrillo. I mean, at that point he didn't know your name yet, but afterwards it's like you get knocked by Coops and your name's Carrillo, your team's losing. <laughs> Because the, the only way Alpha 7 stands up to you is, is the Carrillo at that point. But yeah, I, I saw how you did your ninja thing, and I'm just like, dude, this guy is, this guy is insane. How is he not knocked? How is he not dead yet? <laughs> but, like, the, the timings. Uh, for me, I just focus on the timings on your moves. Like, the second they sprayed that burst and they stopped, you're like, they're, gonna, they're prepping a nade or they're prepping something. Yeah. And you just move yeah, closer, was... right? Yeah. Dang. The details, man. Okay, well, so no more, uh, no more POV from Coops for you guys to watch to try to figure out a secret. Just watch his uh, Instagram from day one and watch that over and over and learn as much as you can. Uh, so next question going down the list: um, Is there a player you look up to? Uh, federal. Federal. Okay. At, yes. When did you start looking up to Federal? Um, during World League last, mm. was it last year? I think. Yeah. Okay. What about and uh? What about him in particular? I just I just like the way he played. Like his long range was like really good. His close range was really good. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to, to be like him. I see. Okay. Um, how much uh? How much time do you spend like, watching players like? Oh, and what do you watch? Um, do you watch like the tournaments and see what they do in tournaments, or do you watch like their montage? Or I watch their montages, yeah. Okay, and then I'm guessing you don't just watch it for enjoyment, but you really like pay attention and try and break things down in your head, right? To learn their yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, um, how much of that do you think is helpful to improving as a player? Like just studying other people. Uh, it's really helpful. Mm. Uh, studying, uh, studying federal. Okay, that helped me a lot. I see. Okay, shout out to shout out to federal because, I mean, NA we got coops now because of you. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, next question. What's your okay? What's your dream team? I get asked this a lot myself, and I know it's a kind of hard question to answer, but here it goes. What's your dream team? <laughs> like only in na or like other regions as well um let's do let's start with only na and then you could put all out of everybody in the world like if you could put together if you could team up with three others who would it be all right well in na it will be me bayo acer and tensa Mm. that would okay that sounds pretty solid yeah and then for global I'd say the the twins, Luxie and Zuxi. Mm-hmm. Um, Paraboy and oh, I'd say Order. Order, okay. So who's getting benched for you to be the starter? Because I think, <laughs> I, I mean, like you haven't gone to Globals yet, and actually. I always tell my stream this too. Like when someone does really well in a tournament, I always say to them, doesn't matter. We need to see how they do in globals. But your performance in particular was so amazing that I would even already put you as a global level player, like without even seeing a global performance yet. So <laughs> out of those four, I personally feel like one of them's getting benched for you because you're, <laughs> you're, you're, I think you're, you're that good already. Thanks, thanks. But I don't, I, hmm, I kind of did a couple of fights during America's. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we still came up. We still came out on top. So if you didn't, so from all the moments that you felt like you threw, if you didn't throw, that would put you probably around like what the ninety kill mark. Yeah, I would imagine somewhere around there. Yeah, you're like. You do realize the second most, which was Carrillo, who was like one of the most experienced players in the scene, only had forty six. <laughs> right? Like 
That is absolutely wild, dude. 76 and then down to 46. I don't think there's been a bigger gap in any other tournament league so far. Like, I'd have to do my research on that, but I believe you have legitimately the biggest gap from first to second in terms of frags in a tournament. So how to improve CQC, um, TDMs, I'm guessing, right? Yes, TDMs. Okay. Um, What in particular when you're doing the 1v1s and TDMs? to improve the CQC? Uh, your crosshair placement. That has to be your, like, your number one thing mm. to focus on. Okay. Um, so when, you, when you're when you doing your TDMs, uh, let's say out of 10 kills on a player in TDM 1v1s, how many of those at this point for you are with headshots? I think all of them. All like, of them? I, I, I get like at least one headshot in every fight. CQC. At least one. Okay, so out of all the, all ten, you at least hit one headshot in, and then maybe finish them off with a body, but it's like it's just always at least headshots every time, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I think that's a really good benchmark for people to kind of gauge where they're at. Um, yeah. So if you guys are watching and if you're practicing your CQC, try and get headshots in every engagement. If you want to be like Hoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know uh, when I 1v1 Xenox a little while back, it was like out of every six deaths of mine, five out of six were with headshots. And like maybe three out of six were double headshots. Like I would look at my armor, right? And yeah, my helmet, Xenox. full red. Yeah. I, I think Xenox has the best CQC in NA. Best CQC. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that that gives me a little bit of um, confidence in knowing that you're still human. Because if because I watch Xenox a lot, and I would say he's the best CQC player. So the fact that you have one area that you're not better than someone at is like okay, this man coops. He's still human. <laughs> but then again, that just means he could be even better, right? Yeah. So for me, when I look at Xenox, I think what makes him the best CQC is his movement. I feel like his movement. Yes. His so movement you would agree? Is really good. Yes, yeah, his okay. movement is really good. Could you, on a scale of like one to five, how close are you to mimicking his his movement, like his uh, movement level? Not close at all. Not close at I, all. Yeah, I, my movement is like really slow, I'm, and I'm trying to work on that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I see his movement, too, and it's just, it's crazy. Like, he has, yeah, like, com- it's, like, complete mastery of movement. He never gets stuck on anything. It's, like, pixel by pixel movement, he's in full control. Like, I never see him, like, swing out one pixel too wide or anything. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, Xenox is insane. in CQC. Mm, okay. So, who would win in a cqc like let's say you guys play 10 six games right you and xenox would you go three and three or you think xenox could maybe pull one extra over you and go like four two i think i think he would go five and one on me five and one yeah his cqc is like it's like out of this world it's just way better than mine all right okay fair enough i mean i've seen his i've seen his shit dude it's crazy um, all right, last one. Uh, how to improve decision making? Um, I would. I watched a lot of PEL. Okay. And that helped me, like okay. with my decision making. So the Chi- the Chinese league, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so like almost every player in the Chinese league is like kind of doing their own thing, but it's like synchronized together as a team, right? It's- yeah pretty crazy to see yeah so um so i guess like for you like i'm just gonna go ahead go ahead and say it you're better than everyone else on your team right but right you don't do like those crazy hero plays that just puts you out of position or anything so when you are playing pmpl and i guess just in general when you're playing the game do you just have really good awareness on noticing where your teammates are and then having a good idea of what the fight might look like in your head, like the enemy's positions and then the map terrain. And then you just 
move to the most perfect position you can like from your relative position is that like how how you do your thought process or like how 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 do you like if i had to tell the viewers like how do you improve decision making coming from coops like what would you say um try to i saw one person always okay like um just like position yourself where you could get like take out one person like Im- like immediately in CQC. Mm, okay. And then I see. So like in a team fight, right? When you got a when you see an opportunity to do something for your team, your first step or thought process is is there a player on the opposing team that I can isolate like angle wise, be it long range or close range. And then you go off that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Uh, that's new. I haven't, I haven't heard of that and yeah, I can see how that works. Usually peak players just think of like, you know, very generic, like get the high ground or get the, get the angle where you could cover. But the way you put it it's it's more like proactive right like it's more aggressive to put it in a really basic term to just like look for the isolation instead yes okay okay i'm gonna need to sit on that one for a little bit now we're gonna go into the second portion uh the pmpl questions specifically and a lot of these we already touched on in the beginning did you expect to do as well as you did (laughs) <laughs> no not at all okay what was your what was your like actually yeah we haven't asked this at all what was your goal coming into pmpl americas like as a team where do you think you would place as a player how well were you shooting to do for like all of that uh as a team i was expecting like top three or top five okay and then as a player i was expecting like to be like a top five fighter Top five, five. Oh, that's still pretty high up there. So, yeah. So, I mean, that, well, I guess that means you knew you put in the work. And so you were expecting like a high performance, right? Because you grinded. Yes. Okay. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a big one. I think a lot of people throw their names up there or like team expectations, team expectations up there, but they don't put in nearly the amount of work amount of work as like like you did um so from so you were expecting top five as a team and then top five as a player right yes okay and you guys blew past that by a huge margin i think the the gap between first and second and team points kind of reflects in how well you did as a player between the gap and first (laughs) and second when it came to frags uh, yeah. when you were getting all your frags was it just like did it feel like just just easy like you were just hitting the shots or did you yeah, feel like they, they were just coming to me like uh-huh okay. i didn't really like have to do anything crazy for them like it, they just came to me okay uh do you think part of that like how much of that is attributed to like your game sense and just how good your shots were and how much of that is attributed to like uh the positioning and uh, this kind of ties into the other question like um the igl being alucard right yes like as a team do you feel like the team was always set up in really good positions and it just made it super easy or was it like 50 50 where it's like you had to make it work and make it happen sometimes and then it got easy or what was that like yes uh alucard put us in like really good positions for mm-hmm. uh uh for it to be like for me to be able to frag out like mm-hmm. how i did i see okay and thinking back to the games like yeah alucard put you guys in good positions but i would notice a lot of the times during a certain engagement where it's like you guys had to move a certain way or rotate a certain way or defend a spot a certain way it was usually you who made the first move into opening that play up right yes okay so alucard like got you guys to the position you guys wanted to be at 
but the hard part of like opening the fight up which a lot of teams struggle with like one team could could win this fight and then they'd win the game or one team could lose the same fight from the same position right but you like kind of open it up a lot of times for your team yes uh nades nades are really like mm-hmm. uh, they they aren't as good anymore as like they were before but my need right. my needs were like actually like like they're always getting the opening i say okay. like i got a lot of nade knocks okay i see open up the fight so your nades were just like on another level during that weekend yeah. right yes okay all right um okay so this is going to be similar to the question i asked about like the sprays right where i asked like how few sprays did you like mess up on so like nade wise usually on average based on what i've seen in competitive just like over the years it takes like about maybe three to four nades for someone to like actually get the nade into a knock like they could hit the person with a nade but you know might not be perfect and they just knock them down but for you like if you can remember back to all the nades you threw um did you like just happen to get it on your second try more often than not or was it even just your first nade? just you know you were just that precise with your grenades yeah it was my first day most of the time first nade most of the time yes oh i don't like my nades were like uh, they were crazy that weekend dang okay so you would agree with me though right like on a typical tier one player like even a mid to high tier one it takes like three to four nade attempts before the knock happens right yeah maybe two to three like on on a good day but <laughs> but you were hitting them like most you said most of them you were hitting on your first nade try yes so did you just like see it in your head like before you threw the nades or was it like how did you get it like just on the on the first try for most of them uh i, I just let it go dude <laughs> it's <was> like <laughs> i'm not sure you were just in the zone right yeah dang on your first i was expecting you to answer like maybe on your second most of the time, but you were really just popping off that hard. Just the first nade attempts, you would just be getting that most of the time. Jesus. Okay. So you were really just playing on another level. Well, do you think you could like, obviously to repeat this performance would be just as like even more insane, but like, do you feel like you can, let's say you were playing at a hundred percent or like more like 120% that past weekend. Do you think you could mimic that, or are you gonna feel like your your actual playing level is like around like ninety percent of that or eighty percent of that? Um, I'd say yeah, uh, ninety eighty percent. Ninety eighty percent of that. Okay. Yeah. So even you are like kind of like okay, what I did was just that's it was, the, yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's me, but that's not <laughs> that's not me all the time, right? <laughs> yeah jeez i mean i mean you made you made a name for yourself like not just a name for yourself but that performance no matter what happens going forwards now is going to be remembered like and i'm not just saying that because i'm interviewing you and i want to make it sound epic but it literally was just (laughs) that epic like crazy crazy performance um looking at some of the other questions um okay here's a good one so what are some of your goals and plans moving forward with PUBG mobile for you and the knights roster um our goal is to keep winning keep doing what we did Mm -hmm. okay and for the knights roster i'm not sure what's going on with that yet okay but i'm personally curious as to um do you plan on staying with the knights or what's your situation with the knights to begin with like were you already signed because i heard somebody saying you were supposed to go to like x set or something like that yes after yeah i was not signed to knights during this americas oh really yeah i was just like picked up just to like help them out with their guns go okay so now after this performance with the knights uh what's your so what's your immediate plans after this so 
after this night's performance, um, are you planning on staying with the Knights and competing? Do, does the Knights even have any upcoming tournaments right after this? Or, like, what's the situation there? I don't... I'm not sure if we have any tournaments. I don't think we do have any tournaments. It's just scrims at this point now. Okay. So it just goes straight into the next split where all the teams come evolved, in, like, involved again, like X said and all the yes. other teams that didn't make it. Okay. So... Okay, so going into that then, what's your plans? Like, are you going to scrim with the Knights and see if it continues to do extremely well? Or do you think there's just a better roster for you to be on? Or is there better offers? Uh, um, and, yeah. We're currently looking for a fourth. Okay. On the Knights? Yes. Okay, I see. You're going to stay on the Knights for now? Yes, I'm staying on the Knights. For okay, now. for now. Okay, gotcha. All right, so... And besides that, you're planning on, you know, picking up on your stream and YouTube a little bit more and just continuing the PUBG mobile grind, right? Yes. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, any thoughts on... Um, if... So, like, if you got offered to play for another region... Would you take it? Like if the, uh, like if you were offered to play in PEL, like with the Chinese teams, would you would you venture and try that out? Or assuming you know there's no language barrier, right? Yeah. You would. Uh, yeah, I would do it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, P PEL is is something else. Would you say the Chinese is still ahead of the curve, like above everyone else? Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, I guess with that one, like FPP or TPP in tournaments, what would you like to to see happen? I would like FPP. Just a hundred percent FPP, right? Yes. Okay. What was the major difference between your performance with the Knights and EFC? Um, with EFC, obviously I didn't perform well as I didn't want, to, or I didn't perform as well as I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So like I, I kind of use that as motivation to get better. Okay. Coming into Americas. Okay. And then mm-hmm. my performance with nights, it was just. <laughs> I mean, just look at the top fragments yeah. list, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I think we got all the more serious questions out of the way. So now it's time for some of the Twitter questions. I don't know if you've seen some of the people that (laughs) have been asking on my twitter that i tagged you in um have you have you taken a look at any of those questions yet no not yet okay so they're it being twitter a lot of them are kind of troll but they're fun so yeah first one we have one the from enigma who taught coops (laughs) the most about the game trick question (laughs) i'm expecting the right name to be said (laughs) Um, it was Enigma. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Enigma. He, he taught me everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, this, so this is the comment about the five fingers. Uh, why are all five finger players being MVP in every region and season of this PMPL? Um, but you play four fingers, right? Yes, four fingers. Okay. So it's not it's not the five fingers. Coops is still on four. Um, and. My personal belief with the whole four versus five is stay on four. I think you could do everything you need to on four, and five is just too a little too extra. Like, how do you feel about that? Um, I tried five finger once, and mm-hmm. I it was, it was just too much. I couldn't do it. Mm, okay. Is there anything on the four finger button layout that you have right now that? you feel like could be just like a smidge better if you were on five or is this is just you just mm, want to focus no. on your gameplay rather than the controls yeah I'd rather just focus on my gameplay gotcha okay and uh let's see uh were you really a fortnite player before playing PUBG? <laughs> <laughs> no i was not Okay. Uh, speaking about that, let's talk a little bit outside of PUBG. So what other games did you play before PUBG Mobile Competitive? And what are some of the games you just play for fun now? Like, 
Yeah. Um, before PUBG, I played a lot of console games like uh, Call of Duty. And okay. Stuff. Console player. All right. Yes. Uh, and then mm-hmm. right now, like uh, besides PUBG, I play a lot of Rocket League too. <laughs> okay. On, my, on the console. On the console, I see. Yeah, there are a few people that asked about Rocket League. Um, was there anything from Rocket League that you feel like helped you with your PUBG M, <laughs> or is it just you play Rocket League for fun? Yeah, it was just for for the fun. Okay. Just relax. Ask them how do we ar- activate God mode on tourneys? <laughs> just position yourself. Positioning. Positioning. Okay. Yes. Alright, this is probably my favorite one. Um, has an e girl slash the <laughs> lack of an e girl contributed to your success? If so, how? No, I do not have an e girl or. Uh huh. Yeah, that's it. I, I don't have one. So do and you, I don't plan on getting one. You don't plan on getting one? That's <laughs> my boy right there. I mean, we've seen what e girls do to players, right? <laughs> All right. So if if you happen to get in or had an e girl before this, your performance definitely would have wouldn't have been as insane as it was, yeah. right? Probably not. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. E girls take too much time, bro. Let me tell you, like <laughs> real girls even take more time. <laughs> That's why I'm retired now and I'm a caster. And <laughs> joking. <laughs> oh, I hope my editor has fun with that one. Um, speaking about e girls, legit question. Obviously, you got a lot of dudes in your inbox now, just you know, <laughs> just like hyping you up, me included, because I mean, I hit you up for that interview real quick. But how many e girls, Coops? <laughs> I will not say on stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a lot. <laughs> or I would have to say, yes. <laughs> if he's not willing to say it means a lot guys so i mean if you guys need that as motivation there you go fucking <laughs> frag your brains out you will get girls because <laughs> coop's got a few of them in the dms right now so outside of practice like uh so you know you did a lot of tdms you do a lot of vod you know player player montage reviewing to really break down a player to how to you know be better than them or learn from their skills you watch pel uh, what is there anything that you feel like you do outside of the game like maybe fitness diet or do you just kind of do your normal stuff with that and it's mostly just gameplay that you know or like the end game stuff and game related stuff that makes you a better player yeah it's just game related stuff that makes me play like a better player gotcha okay all right thank you for your time coops i appreciate it and uh when and how often do you stream uh, i start streaming every day now okay at seven eastern seven eastern so pretty recently you started up the stream grind yes like maybe like a day after america's was over okay all right i'm definitely gonna are you streaming scrims or is it like yes it's scrim- scrims. Ooh, okay i'll definitely be there to watch those then um and okay all right guys i'm gonna link all his socials um is there anyone you want to shout out in particular or uh a shout out to enigma a shout out to enigma okay there you go and, enigma. Sp- and spring spring okay um that's it that's it all right coops thank you for the interview thank you for the show you put on for us thank you for putting na on top and just overall like like inspirational man like your performance it was just damn it was amazing to see thanks yeah. all right i hope you guys enjoyed that interview with coops i know i definitely did i learned a thing or two from him and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and as always thank you guys for watching and have a good one Peace.